Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We are so close to finishing this mountain project, or at least finishing the outside of things. So pretty soon in an episode coming up, I should have a bit of a masterclass in mountain detailing for you guys. We're going to have to go and gather a lot more ingredients for that though. I'm looking forward to getting a little bit more snow farmed up and getting some maybe cyan terracotta and some concrete powder and stuff ready for this mountain project to get to the next level. We can have a lot more detail put into these things, but I think the scope of the project so far is really, really quite large, but it's coming together. I think maybe a couple more Twitch streams and I should have placed enough stone for this whole thing. We're going to have the ski runs coming down here, probably a few more slopes here and there dotted around as well. But before we do all that, I want to take a look today at adopting some different practices when it comes to how I present redstone in this series and maybe a little bit that will help you get organized with your redstone projects as well. And to illustrate this, I kind of want to do a bit of a makeover on the redstone projects that we have set up in this area. The first of which being our hidden piston door inside of here that opens the way to our little dwarven base, which obviously hasn't had much done to it yet, but I'm really focusing on getting the mountains figured out first. I want to make this thing look a little bit more presentable, disguise the exposed redstone we have here, and also maybe tidy up some of the redstone that is trailing around here, maybe also make some of the redstone stand out. So when I am terraforming this area a little bit more later on, I don't end up breaking any blocks that might be integral to the door itself. The next project being this here redstone elevator platform using lots of honey blocks and slime blocks to get us all the way up to the top of this mountain. This really needs a kind of elevator shaft built around it. We could probably do with tidying up some of the redstone here. Look at this. It's all sat on top of grass and diorite and regular stone. None of this seems especially permanent and if I wanted to do anything to this area we would have to tear all of it up and replace it anyway. So I think this seems like a good opportunity to tear down some of this and replace it with some blocks that are going to be here more permanently. The last project of course is this one over here. We have a four-way cobblestone generator being blown up periodically by a TNT duplicator and this thing needs a little bit of a makeover. It needs a couple of things added to it just to make sure that the redstone components stand out. We're using the materials I had on hand so there's a lot of this extra like redstone stuff just hanging around over here and I really think we could tidy this thing up. It also needs a master on off switch to make sure the entire mechanism gets activated at the same time because right now I climb the scaffolding tower, I activate all of the cobblestone generators and the TNT duplicator and then I fly back down again and I have to do that multiple times from the same tower of scaffolding because I'm just not organized enough right now. Today it is time to get organized and for that we are going to actually switch all of this stuff off and then we're going to take a quick trip back to my concrete converter over at Founders Forge. So welcome back to the capital city of the Pixel Rifts Empire. I think today we are going to grab a little bit of red concrete. I think that's going to be the main thing here and I want to effectively fill up these shulker boxes here, a couple of them with red concrete and that is going to be the primary thing we're going to use to tidy up our redstone. Let me explain a little bit here because I think this is a practice that a lot of people need to adopt and it's one that I have taken a little bit of advice from some redstone folks that I've followed over the years. Folks like Mumbo Jumbo who make redstone tutorials regularly. A lot of the time you'll find these guys keeping their redstone very, very clean and making sure they know which circuits are going where, which redstone dust flows into which section and they do that by means of using a decent amount of colored blocks, whether it is concrete or wool, whatever they've got to hand. Personally, I'm going to be using concrete simply because concrete is not a flammable substance and while fire tick is off in this world so I can build some stuff that's a little bit more creative with fire, I know that some people won't and so I'm kind of trying to hedge my bets here and make sure that this is going to be a method that basically anybody can use. So the first thing we're going to do is we've made a bunch of red concrete powder. We're going to head over to the converter and turn all of this into regular concrete because concrete powder is of course one of those substances that falls thanks to gravity. So if we end up breaking some stuff underneath it, it's going to fall and we don't really want to deal with that. Looks like I've already been using the concrete converter here to explode a few bookshelves so that I can gather books for trading, but the uh, chest down there is now empty and we can start feeding concrete into the system. Zero taking its way around. Let me get the shield out of there. Yeah, there we go. So that can uh, go through nice and easily and we should start to see a little bit of red concrete come through the system as well. 
Meanwhile, back at the lodge, I've brought over my shulker boxes of red concrete, and I also made a little bit of grey concrete powder in preparation for a future episode in which we're going to decorate the mountains, because I have some big plans coming up there, but I'm going to stash a few of these shulker boxes away that I've been using to build the mountains in the first place, and we're just going to work with what we've got here for today. Okay, so let's get up in here and figure out what exactly we need to change. For a start, I'm going to take down all of the tower here that's made out of wood, and we're going to replace that with some lovely red concrete just to show that these are the blocks that are going to be carrying our redstone signal. I might still keep this block here made of wood because that's going to be part of the overall construction of the elevator platform and it's going to be a player visible block. The idea is to make all of the blocks that are down here kind of clearly mechanism components and they're probably going to be concealed from player view once we've decorated this whole area a little bit more. So let's start taking those down and replacing them with some some red concrete. I'm also going to replace all of the blocks that the redstone components are sat on down here with red concrete as well just in case I end up doing any more terraforming around here and I want to make sure that all of these blocks remain in place so I don't disrupt any of my redstone mechanism. We might as well do the same with the powered rails that are down here too and Ah, <laughs> I might need to remake some of this, if that's the case. Yeah, I didn't really want my elevator platform to look like a V-shaped section of wood, <laughs> but I think, yeah, we should just need to rebuild that. That's no problem. But this is definitely a reason why I want to adopt this practice going forward, because it's going to be a whole lot easier to do this stuff in advance than it is going to be to change everything up afterwards so yeah unfortunately we're gonna have to do exactly the same thing over here maybe i'll just take the observers out first though how about that wasn't exactly the plan to spend half the time on fire either but there we go now i can place the powered rails back on top of there and we place the observers facing downwards on top of that probably just by looking down at them like so yeah perfect that seems to have worked out pretty well if only i'd thought of that the first time around <laughs> there we go all fixed and all fine and now it is much clearer where all of the redstone components are so if i do any more decorating of this area I know which blocks not to touch especially if I'm digging into them from the sides or from underneath and let's just very quickly check that I put this whole thing back together yep seems to be working just the way it did before the next task is going to be over here and I think I am going to leave the glass blocks as part of this redstone mechanism simply because they are nice and easy to spot as clear redstone components. They don't actually have any place in naturally generated structures. We're not using them to build the mountain out here therefore it's very clear to me that those are not going to be something I want to break in the process of terraforming this area and in this case we have a little bit of a task here because for a start I want to make sure that I can open and close the door from both sides, meaning we'll have to install a button attached to the redstone wire over on this side. And also I wanna make sure that all of the solid blocks in here are made out of red concrete. Plus we need to decorate the inside of this so that as few as possible of the redstone components are showing once we're inside. Unfortunately, the honey blocks and slime blocks in this design are kind of going to be part of it regardless. You kind of can't really do much about this line here without having some blocks attached to them on the inside. And for that to happen, it would be very clear from the outside that there was this recessed area of blocks. And I suppose we could attach all of the blocks to the inside of here, but that, that complicates the slime block door a little bit. So I think instead what we're going to do is just dress up the inside of this as the best we can. And I was thinking maybe because this is meant to be a dwarf and ruin, having some statues on either side of here that the door retracts into could be pretty cool. The only problem here is we're not going to be able to add a bunch of blocks to the inside here in the same way that we've added them to the outside where the door is meant to be concealed. And that is because of the push limit of pistons. We would be exceeding 12 blocks attached to a single sticky piston, or in the case of this sticky piston, it would have to push 13 plus that one. And yeah, that, that's not going to fly unfortunately pistons can't push more than 12 blocks at a time so if we had just these slime blocks the stone blocks on one side and a similar amount of stone blocks on the other side that'd be 15 which we can't really do so on the inside of this we can line it with non-pushable blocks like droppers or furnaces anything that has an inventory and in java edition cannot be pushed so we could disguise it that way but i think we can also come one block out from that and add some statue fronts onto the front of these just to make it look a little bit more like this whole thing is a giant dwarven entrance. I like the idea of doing something like that. So we're going to give that a go. First step though is to take out all of the redstone that is down here. We're going to replace that with our red concrete blocks to signify that there are redstone components attached here and whatever I do with the rest of the surroundings, these are not to be touched. So that's stage one all done. I've covered the entirety of the front of the areas where the slime and honey blocks 
are going to be retracting with droppers facing upwards, which avoids this kind of side furnace texture that happens with the grey slab stripe along the bottom part. And I think that actually looks a lot better. And as you can see, the mechanism still works flawlessly. The droppers don't even end up getting pulsed by any of the redstone. It all just slots into place. Now the next step is going to be a little bit more complicated and I'm going to go and gather a few resources because I've come up with a couple of statue designs in my creative test world that I think are going to look pretty cool flanking either side of this doorway. Okay, and I think I have more or less everything I need. I'm going to light these up temporarily and move some of the torches because we're going to be building the same statue on either side. And it might expand this walkway a little bit here as well, just so we've got enough room to build this. This statue is going to be five blocks wide. And I haven't really built a huge amount of stuff like this in the series before. So this is going to be a little bit of a statue building session as well. I'm going to grab a stone cutter out of here where I had the village box. Should hopefully have a stone cutter or two in there. Yep, got plenty of those. Great, because we're going to be breaking some of this stuff down into slabs that we will need occasionally. And it's always nice at making those things bespoke. So what we're going to do is start with the feet, which are going to be placed a couple of blocks out from here. We're going to start there, I think. We're going to leave ourselves two blocks worth of room at the back. One foot there, one foot there, and we'll just expand the floor of this walkway underneath and we'll be repositioning this button probably to go at the foot of one of these statues just so we can have a nice easy way to leave this place when we're ready to. Behind each of these we're going to be placing a couple of stone brick. This is going to form the base of the feet and legs and we're going to swap in a little bit of stone and a little bit of andesite here and there. Probably come in one like that as well and leave this gap here empty and we'll put some stone around here swap in the occasional block of andesite here and they're just raw andesite to give it a little bit of a textured feel make it feel like the statue has been here for a while and is a little bit worn down we're going to join these two feet across the middle like so with a little bit more andesite and stone and then at the back here we're going to place one more block on either side we'll come out one block here to place that block of andesite there reclaim that one and then above this we're going to be creating a belt of sorts probably using some polished andesite blocks but i want a centerpiece for this so we're going to come back into our beacon box here and grab some blocks of gold i think we'll need two because we're going to do statues on either side while we're at it let's grab a couple of blocks of emerald which we'll be using a little bit later so this belt layer is going to go around the outside here with a gold block set into the middle as though it resembles a buckle we can probably move this torch to somewhere a little bit more central just to make sure that that gap underneath the legs doesn't spawn any mobs and from the top here we're going to start building the torso of our little statue here the stone box in my ender chest had a little bit more natural stone i've converted some of that into chiseled stone bricks and up the center here we're going to do two more chiseled stone bricks like so almost as though this thing has abs or like a chest plate kind of thing going on and then we can fill the rest of this up like so we're going to start the neck somewhere around here so we're going to do kind of a t-shape like that and then the head is going to go on top of this and i think i'll probably make the head just out of raw andesite so we can have a kind of natural looking skin texture for the head we're going to come up three blocks like that and leave room for two eyes on either side of this and a beard down below so this is the shape of the statue so far we've got fairly clearly defined legs torso and then head on the top <laughs> we're going to do a little bit more detailing of all of this to make it look a little bit more statuesque in just a second looking at my notes here we actually want the eye level to only be one block up in the face uh do we want diorite for the eyes or do we want granite i feel like diorite might be a little bit on the nose using polished diorite here but it does really give the impression of eyeballs you could also use stuff like sea lanterns if you want it to glow but i think i want this a little bit more subtle than that let's go with that for now and let's fill the rest of the top there with andesite so this is quite clearly becoming a face and now is where we need the stone cutter once again because i want to make myself some granite stairs out of these blocks of granite i brought with me let's make a few of those and probably a slab or two as well let's get four of those to start off with because we can use this to make a granite beard there's going to be a nice red bearded dwarf statue on this side i've added a little bit of scaffolding here just so we can be more or less eye to eye with this chap we're going to be placing one solid block of granite there and then we need to put the beard around the outside of that we're going to place a granite slab above that so he has space for a big stone mouth and then either side like so we're going to be placing the granite stairs there 
and there to form the kind of mustache whiskers. I've got to make sure this is angled right. It's a little bit tricky to do on this medium-sized scaffold that we have going on right here. Let's add that there. Yep, there we go. And then we can probably have the whiskers come out to either side as well. And then on the underneath, I think we'll have it facing outwards rather than inwards. So you can still see that chiseled stone brick on the inside. Let's gather up all of that scaffolding, step back and take a look. Yep, he's got a mighty beard now. I like the look of that. Over the top of that, I'm going to make one andesite stair to come out as a nose because this guy looks a little bit strange when he doesn't have a nose, but the nose is going to come out basically straight between the eyes, <laughs> which is going to look a little bit cartoonish, I think, but ultimately it's going to at least make the guy look like he has a nose and otherwise it would elongate the face and put it out of proportion with the rest of the statue. Yeah, there we go. I think <laughs> that looks a little bit more dwarven. Dwarves tend to have these big, broad noses in a lot of the kind of fantasy stuff I have seen and around the outside we're going to create a helmet for this guy it's going to come down one block there it's going to come along one block to the sides and even out one block in front of his face so it's going to be a big surrounding helmet we're going to do exactly the same on the opposite side here and bring the wings of it up to meet the top of his head and then from here we're actually going to need some stone brick stairs so I'm going to just hop down and grab some of those from my stone cutter maybe light up the top of his head in the meantime because otherwise we might get some mobs spawning up here in a second. On either side of his eyes here we're going to have a stair come up like so and like so and then that's going to curve the helmet inwards so it covers the top of his brow here and then we'll probably even have a connecting stair here to make it look like the uh, top of the helmet is just kind of ridging the top of his nose, so it kind of bends downwards a little bit. Above that, we're going to place a block of emerald to really stand out in the center of his head. Two blocks either side of that, and then we can continue the curve of the helmet on the top like so. The rest of this is going to be another stair on the side there, and there we can fill the rest in with blocks if we want to. Take that torch out now, and we'll fill in the surrounding of the helmet like so. Pop another block here at the back, and we could even pop a torch on top of that if we wanted to as well. Let's hop down and admire our handiwork so far. I think this guy is looking splendid. <laughs> Definitely got a dwarf stature to him at least. The last thing we need is the arms, and of course, he's going to be holding a sword out in front of here like he is guarding the gate, and it is certainly making the gate look a little bit more in proportion with the rest of the build. It's going to be a little bit cartoony, like I said, but I kind of like that as an aesthetic for down here. We're not going for realism because this is a fantasy world. So just at the sides of the torso here, we're going to be coming out three blocks, one, two, three, like so. We'll come down a block in the side here and then come out one block and in one block. And that is where he is going to be holding this giant sword. We'll do exactly the same thing on the opposite side over here. Coming out three blocks from that shoulder position, down one block, out one block, and in one block. There we go. So now he's got the sword holding position figured out. We're going to make the hilt of the sword out of two and a sight walls like that. That one is going to connect to the beard right there, but that's not such a big issue. And I like the fact that the... Whoa, hello. That's <laughs> why I've got my fireworks out on my hotbar now. I like the fact that the andesite wall in the center there kind of divides up as though it's kind of the, uh, the hilt or the pommel, I guess, of the sword. Now we need to have an andesite block in there. And underneath that, we're going to create the guard out of two stone brick stairs like so. And then the rest of this is going to be andesite all the way down to the ground. We could make this out of some other kind of material as well if you really want the sword to stand out. But I like the idea of the andesite going all the way down there. And we could even rig up one of these to have a button on it. So that's what could activate the door. As long as we can take a redstone signal out from underneath that, that'll work pretty well, I think. Not to mention the fact that we can place some torches behind here, maybe attached to that block there to light the statue from behind, almost giving it a bit of a glow there. And that should hopefully prevent any mobs from spawning on the upper arms of the statue where there is a tube block height in the statue. Yeah, I like that. I think that's pretty good. We could do a little bit more detail here and there, maybe even convert his hands into stone bricks or andesite just to make it look like they are a little bit separated from the arms. And maybe we'll make the arms out of a little bit more andesite texture there as well. There we go. I think that ain't too bad. I've swapped out the guard there for some andesite polished stairs. I think those look all right. And then we've got some stone brick there for hands. So it looks like he is holding that a little bit. I think that looks quite nice personally. And we could even maybe swap that for stone stone brick wall or something maybe I don't know we could we could tinker with the design a little bit more but the fact is we have ourselves a dwarf statue on one side and now we just need to repeat it on the opposite side over here
And after a little bit of work, we not only have the two dwarf statues on either side of the door, we have a little bit of detail in the walkway here. I decided to make the swords look like they went straight down into the ground, and this one on this side has the andesite block at the bottom there as well. A little bit of cracked stone brick around the outside, making it look like it's really been jammed in there, <laughs> kind of heavy style. And on each side of the doorway here, we now have what I thought was the most elegant solution to this problem, rather than have buttons on some of the statues. Just have two buttons either side of the doorway. The one on the right actually opens the doorway. The one on the left doesn't really do anything. In fact, I click on it too much. It just puts me straight into a furnace GUI. But now the doorway opens and closes from both sides. And as with the other contraptions that we've looked at today, I have all of the redstone down here on red concrete. So if I ever change up anything about this area, I know which which blocks the redstones are on from any direction and to be honest I feel a lot better about that now I feel a little bit happier knowing that all of this stuff is pretty well taken care of and the redstone is going to be visible whenever I make any changes oh yeah I swapped out the hands one more time as well so the hands are now droppers facing upwards once again which might look a little bit strange from above but here I really feel like gives the impression of a balled up fist as though they are kind of holding the sword in together between their knuckles and we can still do a little bit more work around the outside to conceal this redstone on the side here but that gets out of the way of all of the moving parts it's not going to be pushed around by any pistons or slime blocks or anything so that is something that we can very easily do just wrap those in stone and make it all part of this mountain cavern we have set up here or even some stone brick pillars raising up behind the dwarves here or something like that just something that will conceal all of the redstone mechanism we can remove that button in there as well and everything will be a lot more tidy after that last but certainly not least we have this monstrosity and and I think the first thing I need to do is light up some of the area around here because I'm sick and tired of getting attacked by zombies. The mountain is starting to come together. We are enclosing certain areas of it and we have some skeletons lurking in the shadows waiting to come out into the sunlight and burn like that zombie just did. But let me uh, throw down a few more torches around here so we have some time to work, some space to think, and I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, so we're finally going to tackle the cobblestone generator. The first thing I'm going to do is take out these note blocks from underneath each of these sections because while of course it is possible to trigger this by using the note blocks and changing the instrument of the note blocks I was mainly doing that kind of for demonstration purposes I guess just to show that you could do it it's probably a little bit more material efficient here though to just use some powered rails we've already done that in the skyblock version of this cobblestone generator so I figure we may as well take out all of these extra redstone components reclaim the redstone dust and the sticky pistons and just pair the whole setup down so it uses powered rails instead in the process we're also going to swap out all of the dark oak wood here for some red concrete just to make sure that this whole thing follows our new redstone guidelines and I think we can just attach that there and then have another red concrete underneath here with some redstone dust on it that will power the powered rails that are going to go underneath each of the uh, observers over here yeah that should be just fine I think okay so we have this whole thing set up a little bit more simply now we just need to put a block over here to test that that works yep perfect okay it has to go into four powered rail here though because if we just put the redstone dust there it's not going to power these three rails next to it so I think four powered rails on each section is going to work out just for those three observers it's going to be a little bit more compact than the whole piston and note block setup that we were using before and everything seems to be functioning as it did previously very good and there's very little chance that I'm actually going to mistake these blocks for anything else but I'm still going to replace the blocks up here that are stone brick carrying redstone with some of our red concrete as well so it can be easily identified from the outside that those blocks there are the ones carrying the redstone current we'll also swap out those note blocks for those as well because it's really not necessary to have note blocks in the equation there and the final step is going to be creating redstone torch towers that reach all the way up to the underside of one of these blocks that can isolate this piston, allowing us to switch everything on and off from a single on switch, kind of like we do in the cobblestone generator I built in Skyblock not too long ago. So we want a redstone torch to go underneath here. Let me quickly make a few of those. I've got some in my redstone box, but that one there should now isolate that piston. And if I remove the lever from here, there we go. The piston does not activate. Very good. So now we need to take out every other block in order to create a redstone torch tower that's going to switch on and off from a centralized location. Obviously not in the middle of the water pool over here because that puts it in range of the TNT, but if it is safely outside then we can chain everything together to a single lever that I can flip and switch everything on and off. 
Using this single tower here as an example, if I apply a signal to the bottom, all of the torches above it invert from whatever their current signal is, meaning that we turn on the cobblestone generator like so and then switch it off by turning that lever off. And that actually allows us to control the entire circuit here if we extend the output from this lever to all of the other things via similar redstone torches. That will of course require me to make a few repeaters, which apparently I don't have any of left in my redstone box, so time to go scavenging for those, I guess. But then we'll be able to switch everything on and off, including the TNT duplicator, as long as I can isolate that section with the lever up there and that I should probably switch out for the red concrete as well thinking about it so uh, let me go and do that and so at long last we have ourselves a completely set up one lever activation system for the entire cobblestone generator obviously it's not doing anything to these zero tick bamboo farms down below which we're eventually going to replace with I don't know some sort of blaze rod a chest or something like that to make sure these furnaces have enough fuel. Bamboo is a really inefficient fuel. You should never use it anyway, but the zero tick thing is going away in 1.16. But up here, yes, we have ourselves a system that switches on and off every single part of what's going on up here, including the TNT duplicator. And I don't know what you're saying, but I definitely didn't rebuild this entire thing when the uh, whole thing became a redstone clock and it blew itself up several times over. No, I haven't entirely rebuilt that entire thing. Let me just put some of these redstone components away here for no particular reason so I'm just gonna switch this on and hopefully all of the cobblestone generators should start going the TNT is falling as well yes and it's all working flawlessly thank goodness for that and I am just going to use the rest of the scaffolding to scaffold up here and take a look at this thing from above because I have to say with all of the red concrete around here this looks a heck of a lot more attractive I don't know what it is about having some clean material in all of this nonsense all of the cobblestone and piston textures and stuff like that but there's something about this that just really appeals to me and even though we have these kind of spaced out sections and some sections where the spaghetti redstone takes over a little bit. I really like this look for contraptions and I will definitely be using my red concrete more in order to make sure I know where all the redstone goes around future contraptions. And I hope this is something you guys can take a couple of lessons from as well. But that is going to be where we wrap up this episode. Whoa, uh, let me pop a torch on there. Yeah, there we go. That's where we're going to wrap up the Minecraft Survival Guide for today, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.